okay in this video continuing um, with equivalence and electrolytes um, this particular study check problem um, shows how to convert milli equivalence into moles all right so you start out with 8.8 um, .8 milli equivalence <clears throat> per liter excuse me of calcium and the problem says how many moles of calcium ion are in 0.5 half a liter of blood so per um, liter it's 8.8 .8 meq of the calcium ions per liter of blood so half a liter would be half that amount 4.4 and then um, by definition one eq of calcium is a thousand meq all right so uh, meq gets cancelled so if you divide 4.4 by thousand that comes out to be 0 0.0044 eq of the calcium ions in half a liter of blood now the next step is to convert those eq into moles using the equality one mole of calcium um, is 2 eq of calcium all right because the charge on the calcium ion is 2 so one mole of calcium ion has got 2 eq of calcium ion all right so then divide 0 0.044 by 2 and that gives you 0 0.0022 moles of calcium ion all right um, so if you had 8.8 .8 meq of the calcium ion which is the positive ion um, and if the chloride ion is the only other ion present in this particular um, um, present in um in in blood um in this blood sample for example then the number of positive ions the amounts of the number of positive ions must equal the amount of the um, negative ion therefore the concentration of the chloride ion has to be also 8.8 .8 meq per liter in order to balance um, the charges so you can see that here um, you have the listing of the different uh, the compositions of the different ions in blood plasma and then um, the different IV solutions like the normal saline um, ringers maintenance replacement solution and so on um, the key thing to note here is that the total number of positive charges is always going to be equal to the total number of negative charges, all right? So if you look at normal saline, if you add up all the totals of the positive charges, it comes out to be uh, 154. And um, you'll see that the uh, total numbers for the negative ions will also be 154 so it doesn't matter what type of um, IV solution it is the numbers of the positive charges must equal the total numbers of the negative charges all right in this study check it says in one mole of Fe3 plus there are so you see this the charge on an Fe3 plus um, so that means in one mole of Fe3 plus there's going to be 3 EQ. If you have 2.5 moles of the sulfate and sulfate ion has a 2 negative charge. So one mole has got 2 EQ. Therefore 2.5 moles would have twice that. So 2.5 times 2 and that would give you 5 EQ. An IV bottle contains sodium chloride. If the amount of sodium ion is 34 MeQ per liter, then of course um, the charges must balance. So the Cl minus should also be 34 MeQ per liter. All right, next we um, come to solubility. Uh, section 9.3 and we have to define solubility solubility is that we're talking about um, certain amount of solute 
present in a finite amount of solvent. So in this case, it's uh, showing a person suffering from gout and the way they gauge gout is they look at the concentration of uric acid. Uric acid is a waste product. If it exceeds a certain amount, it leads to this condition called as gout. So the normal level in plasma is 7 milligrams of uric acid per 100 mil of the plasma um, at 37 degrees centigrade, which is body temperature. All right. So also solubility is dependent on temperature. So they have to list the temperature because it varies um, by temperature. All right. So um, because this is the normal level for uric acid, if uh, it exceeds this normal level in 100 mL of plasma, then of course it leads to disease, uh, diseases like gout. So solubility is basically the maximum amount of solute that you can dissolve in a given specific amount of solvent. So for example, in 100 grams of water, if only 39 grams of sodium chloride can dissolve at say room temperature, then that is the solubility of um, sodium chloride. And also remember that if you heat up this 100 grams of water, um, it is possible then to um, have a different type of amount of solute dissolve in that same 100 grams of water. So solubility is definitely dependent on temperature. So you can have um, solutions which do not reach that maximum amount of solute. All right. So those kind of solutions would be called as unsaturated. So here, suppose you have 100 grams of water and you've only added about 20 grams of sodium chloride. That would be an unsaturated solution because you can go up to 39 to, um, to reach the maximum capacity of solute. So there's room for more. You can add more solute. That kind of solution which has not reached the maximum point uh, of solute is called as an unsaturated solution. A saturated solution is one where you the solution um, has the maximum amount of solute and then there is a little bit left over which is undissolved and stays at the bottom of the container. Now there is an equilibrium that goes on between the solute which is dissolved into the solution and the solute which is outside of the solution, all right? So between the saturated solution, the solution that is saturated, totally filled with solute to its maximum capacity and the solute that has come out because there's no room for it to go into solution, there is an equilibrium that goes on. It's a dynamic equilibrium. It goes back and forth. And so this is indicated by this double arrow, all right? The double uh, it, it forward it shows that the solute is going into solution and the reverse arrow shows that some of that solute keeps coming out of solution as more goes into solution. So this is a back and forth process that occurs and hence it's re referred to as an equilibrium. So you see um, in this um, pictures here on the left side the unsaturated solution um, there's not enough solute here. It hasn't reached its maximum capacity. So that's um, unsaturated. Now here you will see as you're adding the solute, it starts disappearing. That means it's going into solution and there's nothing left over. Nothing comes out of solution. Whereas in a saturated solution, you the solute um, in solution has reached the maximum capacity and then any kind of excess comes out of solution and stays at the bottom of the container. However, there is, if you look at these double arrows, it shows that um, there is an equilibrium. It's dynamic because of the fact that it occurs all the time. So some of the solute moves into solution, some whereas other uh, solute particles come out of solution. So it's a constant process that is happening and that's the definition of an uh, saturated solution. 
identify each of the following solutions as being either saturated or unsaturated. Salt disappears when put in water, so that's obviously unsaturated. Sugar added to a cup of water does not disappear but sits at the bottom of the cup and that would be a saturated solution because it has reached its maximum capacity and all the extra solute sits at the bottom of the cup. At 40 degrees centigrade, the solubility of potassium bromide is 80 grams in 100 grams of water. Now, um, every time you mention solubility, you have to mention the temperature because if you heat up the same amount of solvent, this 100 grams of water, it is possible then to dissolve more than 80 grams. So its solubility will go up um, as you increase the temperature. So, however, at 40 degrees, it's 80 grams of potassium um, bromide in 100 grams of water. So suppose you had the 100 grams of water at 40 degrees centigrade and you only dissolved into it 60 grams of potassium bromide. Then it is there's room for 20 more to be added on because the maximum capacity is 80 grams. So obviously A is an unsaturated solution. Suppose you had double the amount of water um, 200 grams, then you will be able to dissolve twice that amount of KBr, which is about 160 grams. So if you dissolve 200 grams of KBr in 200 grams of water, that would create a saturated solution. Um, some of that extra 40 grams of KBr will remain undissolved at the bottom of the container. Um, now, in scenario C, if you take 25 grams of KPR and add it to 50 grams of water, so half this amount of water, it should dissolve the maximum capacity should be around half of this. So that would be about 40 grams. Um, so 25 grams means that there's room for more. So C would be an unsaturated solution. As I mentioned, temperature has an effect on solubility. For most cases, as you can see in the graph, solubility is defined as the amount of solute, gram of solute in 100 grams of water. And for all of these listed solutes here, as you can see from the line, sodium phosphate, uh, potassium nitrate, sodium nitrate, glucose, and potassium iodide, you can see that the lines um, are going upward all right so that means as the temperature is increasing you're able to dissolve more and more of the solute in that same amount 100 grams of water so the solubility is increasing whereas if you look at sodium chloride you'll see that it's like a flat line um, which is parallel to the uh, temperature axis the x-axis all right so it's not changing much um, it kind of goes up a little bit to about 39 and then it holds steady, all right? So no matter what the temperature, it's independent of temperature, 100 grams of water is only able to dissolve around 39 grams of sodium chloride, all right? Um, whereas in most other cases, most solids, um, with the increase in temperature, uh, the solubility uh, also increases. Now this is different for gases. If you look at gases, as the temperature goes up, the solubility of the gas becomes less. As you can see in this particular um, graph, you can see that for all these gases, um, the line is decreasing as the temperature increases. All right. Okay. So, um, this does have an effect because you can see that on um, hot day as the lake, um, uh, the lake or uh, any kind of fresh water source or the sea level um, starts depleting, um, you, you will also see that the wildlife, um, it's hard to sustain the sea life like fish etc start dying during the hot um, weather because there's less oxygen now in the water to sustain them. And we will stop here.